Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. So let's go ahead and fix these. Let's start with the guillotine. These giant pulleys, what, what is this? Uh, it looks kind of strange. So, we need little bitty pulleys like this. This is just a very small dowel. I'm not sure what size or where I got it from. I got a ton of them for like five bucks or something. But what you can do with these is take a triangular file and start cutting a little groove into it. It helps to keep that groove straight if you just sort of gently roll it across your mat while you're filing. And you could continue doing that the entire way around until you get a pulley shape. Or you can snip off a little chunk of that and chuck it up into whatever cheap drill you've got and use that to help you out. If you have a round file like this, then definitely use that. Otherwise, you can take a piece of sandpaper and wrap it around a toothpick and you'll get pretty much the same result. Just try to hold the file as steady as possible and spin the drill. As far as how deep you make the groove or how wide the spaces are on either side of it or whatever, that is entirely up to you. Just do whatever looks right for you. Once you've got it how you want, you can hold your knife up to it and spin it some more and that'll give you a nice straight line where you can cut and then just saw it off very carefully. If you have that weird little piece on the bottom that didn't saw quite right, you can just run it on some sandpaper. That'll flatten it out. So you will still need to drill a hole in the center of it for a rod to go through, or you could maybe glue something on to fake it. I'm actually going to put a rod through it. So I got a drill bit here that's roughly the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than a push pin, and a little pin drill, and drill it out. Now if you're going to use a pin drill, that's going to take you forever and your hand will be cramped and it just sucks. So if you want to use power tools, go ahead, but do not hold on to the thing with your fingers. It's entirely too small to hold on to it safely and you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing anyway. So just hold on to it with a pair of pliers and drill away. A little knockoff Dremel does the job pretty well. Try not to drill holes in your mat. Fits on a push pin pretty well if you want it to be able to rotate. And it's um, about the right size for this cord. This, this cord's a little bit too big. So let's make a thinner cord. Using the exact same string we used before, just give it a little twist so you can isolate one of the strings. And because this stuff is really slippery, you can just grab that one string and pull it. And as long as the strand is short enough, it'll just pull straight out. Now you've got two and you've got a one. You can use whichever you prefer. If you are going to use the one single one by itself, you're going to need to wet it and then hang it with some weight on it to pull all of the little kinks out of it. I kind of like the double strand because it's still got that twisted rope look to it. The end of it will still be frayed out like this, so all you really need to do is loop it over and then burn it. And you're only trying to get it hot enough to where you can pull it apart and it'll be melted together where you pulled it apart. Just don't burn yourself. Melting nylon on your skin is not fun. So there we go, that fits a little bit better. Need to make some new holders for these pulleys though, so I'll just take a regular old popsicle stick and put a mark in it with the push pin so I know where to drill, and then drill out the holes using the same bit, same method. I just put a block under it so I didn't drill into my mat again. One day I'll learn to stop doing that. Then you can cut those off to whatever height you need. If you break them in half, you can just super glue them back together. It's not really going to matter after you put the paint on it. Just go ahead and assemble them and then put some super glue on there. If you did want the pulleys to still rotate, you're going to have to glue differently, but like I said with other things, I don't really plan on my stuff moving, so I don't mind if it's all bound together with super glue. I just want it to stay. If your thing is uneven or you're trying to put an angle in it, you can just sand it to put the angle or even it up. I did not cut that weird V notch into it this time, I just put it closer to the edge. So I'm just sanding it down so it kind of leans a little bit. Once you're all happy with it, you can go ahead and trim off the little spikes sticking out and paint it all up. Same idea as before, just put some super glue on there and stick it right on. And so with this one, I didn't cut the V notch into it, it's just going on the very edge there. So just put enough super glue to hold it and then take your knife and trim it off so it actually kind of makes sense for where it is so it doesn't look like it's hanging off. Just sort of trim that rounded. Once it's good you can go ahead and glue it down. Just make sure you repaint wherever you had to cut stuff away. 
Go ahead and use the burn method for cutting your rope at the right length so it didn't fray out on you. And you're pretty much done with that. That's a whole lot better. I guess I could still do something about adding weight to the blade, but I'm not real concerned about it dropping perfectly. I just want it to look cool sitting on the table. So these giant wheels and the gigantic ropes that are way too big for Minnie's wrists. Let's get rid of that. Absolutely no finesse here. Just grab it, twist it, break it off. Go ahead and re-glue your metal banding if you tore that off like I did. For the ropes, we're going to do sort of the same thing we did on the guillotine there, except we're using the jute twine. Except this stuff is twisted in such a way it doesn't really want to come apart like that, so you have to untwist one side of it, separate those two strands, let all of the twist come out of everything, and then continue that all the way down the line of the thing. Once you've got it all taken apart, you can go ahead and soak it in some glue and water. It'll make it kind of stiff, but it'll also make it a lot stronger. Or you could use an entirely different string if you wanted to. But here's one that I prepped. You can see that it's, it's very stiff. But after you just bend it around a few times, it'll kind of cooperate. So for the wheels this time, we're going to use a chunk of paintbrush handle. You know, like if you buy those cheapy foam paintbrushes. These are the dowels they have for the handles. Just cut off a couple little chunks and you can position that on your mat to where the lines are making a perfect cross and then use that for your guys to put your little dots. I had to do that off camera because I couldn't see what I was doing, but there you go. Just hold that in some pliers. Do not hold it with your fingers and drill some holes wherever your dots are. On the first one, you can drill all the way through to the other side. And then when you do the side ones, as you're drilling through, once you punch through to that channel you've made all the way through, you'll feel it just drop through. You can actually feel it. I think you can probably see it in the video here. That's a good spot to stop, and you flip it over and drill the other side. I suppose you could go all the way through if you're feeling kind of brave, but I didn't think I'd be able to get my holes to line up, so I figured, nah, just flip it over and go from the other side. Same idea, we're going to use these fancy toothpicks here, as they have neat little handles on them. Just go ahead and clip the spiky part off, leaving about a quarter inch or so. And you're going to need to sharpen that quarter inch so that it'll actually fit in those holes. Just use your X-Acto and trim them into a little spike. You could probably also use these as like vampire slayer spike props to put in your mini's hands. That would look kind of cool. Well, get them all spiky and then you can put a little super glue in the hole and stick the spike in there. Only doing four handles per wheel on this one. Then just glue them to the ends of your rod, offset like this. Then paint or stain it whatever color you want. I use the stain that I used on the guillotine because it looks cool and it's quick and easy. Go ahead and put it back where it goes. Glue the metal banding down. And for some wrist cuffs, I took the same metal banding and folded it in half and then wrapped it around a barbecue skewer and then glued a little tab to make like little handcuffs. I'm going to use some rings here from the Ring Lord, not sponsored, wish I were. Uh, I'm going to use those to make little cuffs, you know, connectors to the cuffs for the string to go in. You just take a push pin, stab a hole through the little tab you made. And then you can use a larger pokey tool to widen the hole. Got to get it wide enough to get one of the rings through it. I'm a fumbling mess on this one for some reason. The second one I got done in like 30 seconds, I swear. But yeah, get your hole in there and get the ring poked through and close up your ring. Then you can tie the string on like you would normally. And there you go, a little handcuff. It probably looked better if the attaching ring were smaller, but that's the smallest I've got. If you get some jewelry stuff from Walmart or wherever you shop, you can get a pack of things called Findings. It's got a bunch of like earring posts and lobster clasps and whatnot. There are also small rings in there that would probably work really well for this, but I'm all out of those. So just like before, we're going to wrap it around the rod there and super glue it down. One good thing about using the stain is, like I said, it's really sticky. So once you've got it to where you want to glue it, you just mash it in that little crease there and it'll stay. And you can just put glue on top of it. This does still spin freely very well, so you could leave the handcuffs hanging to the side if it's not in use. Or um, put them on a mini if you have one that's in the right position. Or you can glue them to the table, whatever you want to do. But however you want to set it up in the end, this still definitely looks a whole lot better than it did. 
So there you go, guys. If you ever make something and you look at it and you're just like, no, that's that's not what I had in mind. Don't be afraid to go back and change it. Of course, as always, thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.